Hello and welcome to part one of my two-part series, How to Set Up Your da Data Table for the Universal Gravitation Simulation. So I'm starting off here in my FET simulation and I have my two spheres set at some distance apart. You can see the force uh, on M1 by M2 is equal to the force on M2 by M1. That makes things easy. For this lab, I'm having you keep the distance between these two centers of mass constant. So the, the R value is my constant for this experiment. The masses are my independent variables, and I will be changing these to whatever I want. And the force is my dependent variable. So you can see that these uh, force values are really, really small. You can record these using scientific notation, which I encourage you to do. So I can see here that this is one, two, three, four, five, six places behind the decimal place. So I would record this force as 3.477363 E negative six. If you're not comfortable with that, you can always just record the entire number, 0.00000347763. But again, I encourage you to use scientific notation for this. Fill in your data table in Word, and then open your Excel. So I go to Excel, and you can see I've already recopied my data table into this, uh, into this program. I have the mass values, which I chose. I have my distances, which I keep constant. And here I've recorded the force values from the simulation. Now, I want to generate a graph. And the slope of this graph should give me g. As such, I need my x, or my independent variable, for the graph to be m1 times m2 divided by r squared. So to do that, I need to first square all of my distances. When I plot this f versus m1 times m2 over r squared, my slope will be g. So again, let's get these distance values squared. And so I come to this. I've made a excuse me. I've made a column that says distance squared, just so I can keep up, uh, keep track of everything. And so I come to a space below or an entry below. I click the equal sign. I click my first distance value, this C2 column. I raise it to the second power, click enter, and you can see, okay, four squared is 16. The, the cool thing is if I grab the bottom right-hand corner of this entry and I drag it down, it auto-populates. It squares all of these values. You can see this is C3 squared, C4, C5, and C6, C7 squared all the way down. Now I want to multiply my M1 by my M2. Again, to do this, I, I click under this column that I've already titled M1 times M2, and I click the equal sign, and then I click this entry, A2. I go Shift 8 for the times uh, symbol, the asterisk. And then I grab the second column next to it, or the second entry next to it, the B2. And then I click Enter, and it automatically does 50 times 200, which is 10,000. Now if I select this entry, and I grab the bottom right-hand corner and drag all the way down to row 7, it auto-populates. It will automatically multiply every column that I selected for the first and it'll do that all the way down. So you can see that this is A7 times B7. So that's really, really nice. Now here, I want to do this, these M1 times M2 divided by the distance squared. So that's really easy. I come here under, I've titled this column just the equation that I'm following in order to make this G my slope. So I'm going to come right underneath this column and I click equals. I'll take my M1. I'll hit the slash symbol to do divide by, and then I have the distance squared, hit enter, and bam. Now I can grab this entry, the bottom right hand corner, drag it down, it will auto populate all of these values, and now we're in business. Now I can make a graph of force versus m1 times m2 over r squared, and I will have, uh, from that graph, I will get the slope and the slope will tell you my G value. And I will save that part for the next video. So I'll see you there.